Oh my goodness. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great Thirsty Thursday. It's another day, and I'm coming down the tail end. In fact, I am done for the day. Uh, it's been kind of a long day. I've been doing all kinds of stuff here and uh, working on this old house over here. Uh, helping a friend get her place together just moved in and I tell you what this is a little slice of heaven right here because um, I'm sitting here look, look at this Hold on. Let, let me flip the camera look at this isn't that just that's just uh, to wake up and see that is just amazing um, anyway, we have news on the Cowboys because that's what we do here on the Joe Blue Sports Report. Um, Luke Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker who thus far, as far has lived up to the high standards that the Dallas Cowboys have for their second round draft picks, which is no expectations whatsoever. The Cowboys have had problems with their second round draft picks. There's still hope for Schoonmaker. There's still hope for Sam Williams, uh, Marshawn Needlin. I hope that we're going to see great things from him. But in the grand scheme of things, the Cowboys' roadside is littered with second-round draft picks that just didn't make it. Guys like Tristan Hill and Bossman Fat, you know, uh, Jalen Smith. I mean, you can go down the wire. Um, we have gotten two great ones, so don't let me, you know, poo-poo on all of them because... Diggs and Demarcus Lawrence have been fantastic, and those guys are second-round picks. But unfortunately for Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker has just been injured a lot in his career here. And right now, he had off-season shoulder surgery, and he's got uh, a ham severe hamstring pull. He says, he says that he sees light at the end of the tunnel right now. That you know everything is bad is now kind of behind him. He's healing up. He knows the playbook and he feels comfortable and stuff that when training camp gets here that he'll be ready to hit the ground running and I hope that that is the case and you know this brings up um, yesterday I believe it was or the day before yesterday the NFL PA started proposing to the players and they're going to go ahead and do a straw poll and try to connect with them about OTAs okay basically taking OTAs and condensing them, say, a month before training camp. And I think that this would actually be a good idea because the problem is, is, you know, you go through the season and all the, you know, you're practicing, your body's used to everything, and then you just stop. And then you pick up in April. And you start working out and things. And you know, if you're like me, old, and you haven't used the same muscles in a while, you start using them, they get sore. You know, they're real stiff, they're tight, you know, and so on. It takes time to work it out and get them up to speed. But if they start out with OTAs and continually build it up to go into training camp, maybe some of these soft tissue injuries that we see won't happen. And maybe a guy like Schoonmaker starts working and ramping it up slowly and is able to keep from having these injuries. That would be my hope that we would have um, as far as that goes. Schoonmaker, I would love to see him do some great things. Uh, fortunately, we've got Peyton Hendershot, and we have some other tight ends that are there that are ready to kind of take the mantle and try and do something uh, with the team. Now, the Cowboys, of course, have some problems of their own making, okay? We've got some players that, you know, aren't quite happy, and Diggs is not there right now uh, working out with the team. And you've got Micah Parsons who showed up yesterday and then left and things. You got Mike McCarthy saying, yeah, he's in fantastic shape, but we've got a whole new defense that we're doing and we need him here. So you see and you understand the frustration that's there. The thing about it is, is it's not necessary. It's really not necessary for the Cowboys to have the issues that they do. You go through and you get these guys paid. And, you know, 
it's not the player's fault that you can't figure out how to manage your own money. You know what I'm saying? And it's not for the players to look and say, you know what, I'll give the team a team-friendly discount because they don't have any money. It's not their fault that you don't have money. It's your mismanagement. It's your making bad contracts. No other team. I don't hear anybody else, anybody else talk about you can't pay people. I've seen quarterback after quarterback get paid over and over again without having any issues. We saw last year Jalen Hurts get paid over 50 million. We saw Lamar Jackson get paid. We saw Justin Herbert, who, mind you, for the last three years, he had 38 TDs his sophomore season. He had 25 the next year, got paid. Then, then, then the next season, with Kellen Moore as his offensive coordinator, maybe that was the problem, was injured and had 20 TDs. But hey, nobody said, hey, no problem. You know, you can't, can't pay the guy. You know, now you see Jared Goff, he got paid. And not only him, they didn't take care of the left tackle and stuff. You see Miami, who signed all kinds of free agents, including Tariq Hill, to a $30 million, right? They just signed uh, Waddle to 28. To 28. They got the two highest paid wide receivers on one team. And they're working on Tua's contract. Somehow, they got the money. How is it we don't sign no free agents? And we can't even sign our own guys. And we're sitting here mad at the players saying he's taking all the money. What, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are we supposed to feel sorry because the Cowboys don't know how to manage their money and that it needs to be the player's responsibility to fix the situation? No. I mean, that's like, I come to your house to do work, right? You got $10,000 worth of work to do, right? Right? And you want me to come work at your house and fix this stuff because you need it fixed, right? But you were hanging out at the club buying drinks for everybody else and you spent your money there. You decided, you know, I got to get the 22 inch rims for my vehicle, right? Because that was more important. You know, I had to go out and get the latest Air Jordans. So I ain't got the money to pay you, Mark. Since I don't have the money to pay me, pay you, why don't you give me a discount to make up for it? Um, did they give you a discount on those drinks at the club because you were broke? Did they give you a discount on those Jordans because you were broke? Did they give you a discount on the rims because you were broke? No? Then why is it my responsibility to do something that none of those other people did for you? There you go. All right. So, with that being said, I'm going to sit out here because they went out to get some Mexican food for dinner. And I'm going to enjoy this weather. It's about 65, 68 degrees. The sun's going down. We got the water flowing through here. It couldn't be prettier than right now. I appreciate y'all. Have a great day. Peace out.